Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I have a fun little craft for you today and those of you who enjoy decorative crafts and paying attention to little details will really enjoy this one. Today we're going to make folk art painted acorns. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Laura Beth Love and I'm an artist and author and I love to create all different types of art and craft projects and share them with you. Now let's get started. The three basic materials that you will need for this project are acorns, acrylic craft paint in whatever colors you like, and dotting tools. Now if you don't have dotting tools, you can use toothpicks or another item like that with a small end for painting dots. You will also need something to use as a palette, such as a paper plate. Today I'm using a recycled styrofoam tray. Put a small amount of the colors of your choice on your palette. And remember, you do not need a lot of paint. A little bit will go a long way. It's also helpful to have paper towels for cleaning up messes, a jar of water for cleaning brushes or dotting tools, and something recessed to place your acorns in to dry. I'm using a plastic art palette to set my acorns in to dry. I'll put them down with the cap down and the bottom of the acorn facing up, and you'll see that towards the end of this video. Now, you're going to need to prep your acorns. You're going to want to wash them, dry them, and I like to put mine in the oven at a low temperature, about 200 or 225 degrees or so for about 20 minutes, just to make sure that they're really dried out well. Starting with our first acorn, I'm just going to choose one of my dotting tools, and you know, they have different sized ends. Now, these are manicurist like nail art tools and I bought them on Amazon just to use for art and I use them in my alcohol ink paintings and for some acrylic paintings they're great for dotting and I'm going to choose my first color here I'm using a purple and all I'm going to do is go around in a pattern and putting down dot after dot now you can see that I'm dipping just about before every time I place a dot and I do speed this up or, or it would take forever to watch all these dots. But um, so I'm gonna go around, place a dot and I'm holding the acorn with one finger on the top, one on the bottom and kind of twisting it, turning it as I'm working. And you have to be careful. It is an odd shaped item to be painting on. Um, you know, it's round, it's small. They tend to um, fly out of my fingers once in a while. And um, all you're gonna do is go around and then when you are finished with that color, choose your second color. I keep a paper towel handy that I wipe the end of my dotting tool off with. And now that I have two larger rows of circles down, I have purple and green, I switch to a smaller dotting end to put some smaller white dots here and there. Now, the acorns aren't perfectly shaped, you know, exactly symmetrical. Uh, there are some bumps. Some of them have like small little cracks in them. They're a natural object. So you're going to have to work with that while you're working. And, you know, they're just really fun to do. And it's autumn. Find an oak tree and collect your acorns. Like I said, you want to make sure you dry them out very well. You don't want any, you know, insects in there or anything. And uh, here we are with the next one. This is a longer style acorn. Some are very small. I have one that's like really big that I do. I'll have to try to find more like that because those are easier to hold. And I'm just going around and creating a pattern. Now, some acorn caps will have a little stem on there that makes it a little easier to hold. You can tie a string on that to hang it, to dry it that way, you know, put the string on before you start your painting. Or you can use those little screws. They're like eye screws. The bottom part is a screw. The top part is like you know, a circle like an eye, and you can get those in very small sizes and you can screw those in. And, you know, that's another way that you can not only make it easier to hold while you're working with it, but you can also use that at the end to hang it. You know, if you want to use it as a decoration or turn it into a necklace or a piece of jewelry, then you have a little like kind of like a loop bail on there. Now with this one, I'm going in a little bit of a different direction. I changed from a regular dot and I made it kind of like a comma in the green. And then I'm using the small dotter with white and making those little dots. And I really like the way this one turned out. I think it got really pretty. So as you can see, I start by working 
right where the acorn cap attach attaches to the acorn and I'm working down from that and I'm going to work down as far as it is comfortable. Um, it's getting a little bit close to my finger there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to quit and let this dry and then later on when it's dry I can finish off the bottom if I want to add a few more designs to the bottom of the acorn. So for now here's this one placed in the rack and I'll set those aside and move on to my next one. I'm using a copper colored metallic paint for this one. You know the color kind of blends into the color of the acorn but you know rust and turquoise what a great combination. So here I have kind of a copper and a blue um, basically the same idea and I just love that color combination and a little bit of white always gives it a little pop of brightness here and there and you know vary your sizes of dots um, you can do different patterns you can do lines um, I go up and down on some of them other ones I do kind of like a diamond shape with the dots this one here I made a dot and I pulled it down so I made it kind of like a just kind of like the top of an exclamation point so then I switched back to the smaller size dotting tool and using white paint I'm making one dot and then going down the side dot 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 and then the other side dot 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 and just repeating that all the way around the acorn. And you know what? If you run out of space it's fine. Try to squeeze one in there or not. If you make one that's like the wrong shape guess what? It's fine. They don't have to be perfect. Not at all. Mine aren't perfect and you know what? They still look really good in the end. Now if you want yours to be perfect, all you have to do is practice. Do one after the other, and then do more, and then do more, and then do more, and so on and so forth. And your dots will be pristine, you know, they'll be perfect. Um, but also be able to enjoy it, you know, be able to do it just for the joy of doing it. I mean, when you really sit and think about it, how could we be creative, and how do we invent new things and make new discoveries without just trial and error, without just going for it, doing it, not worrying. You know, you have to let go of that fear of, oh, I'm, you know, I'm scared to do this or I'm going to mess what it happens up. when you touch and it? There's what happens when you get your finger in it, by the way. <laughs> but you have to let go of that and, you know, just enjoy it. Have a good time. Now, here's one where I did those, you know, I did like a big dot and then I pulled it down I made it like into a streak and then I'm taking some like a reddish orange and going in between the green and I'm just I'm really attracted to that neon green it's one of my favorite colors so to finish this one off I've chosen a lighter or brighter orange and put a few dots below the darker one just going one row after the next and then I'll set this one upside down in the tray to dry and we'll take a look at the other ones and see which ones are dry and perhaps we can do some painting on the bottom of those. So here they are and they're drying rather quickly. Now some of them have thicker spots of paint. They're going to take a little longer to dry. One or two I might have bumped up against the edge of the tray. That's all right. So now with the first few that we did being sufficiently dry, I'll turn them over and then hold them from the cap at the bottom and finish with my dots. You can also take a little paintbrush if you like and you can paint on there. You know, I have a few that I, um, I have a base coat of paint on you'll see in a little bit and then I did some designs over those. Now I'm just continuing this one with the same color scheme using some of that green. And once I'm finished with it I'll put it back in the tray with the bottom side up for it to dry. Now here's that large one I was talking about. This one turned out really pretty. You know, because it has more surface area, you have more space to do more designs, maybe get a little fancier, and I think this one might be my favorite. I decided to add some dark forest green to the bottom of this. It's one of my most favorite colors in the whole world, and that one's pretty much finished. Now, this is one that I painted a couple years ago. I have a couple handfuls full of these really old ones and I weeded through them and pulled out some solid ones. So for this solid navy blue one I decided to just keep it two-tone so I'm just doing white dots and what I did was I did one row of dots and then for the second row I went kind of in between the two and then 
so on and so forth. And it pretty much spaces the dots pretty perfectly away from each other. And it's kind of a like a nice little variety to my handful of acorns that look so pretty in the little bowl on my dresser right now. And, you know, it's a different style. And talking about color combinations, think of all the different color combinations you could do in these. You can make Christmas ones, red, green, holiday colors. Maybe you want to make Valentine's Day ones and do them in red, pink, and white. Or, you know, if you have some kind of event, let's say you're doing like a bridal shower in autumn and you want to do wedding colors. I mean, there's so much you can do. You know, you take that one idea and then out from that, seed sprouts all these other ideas and you know with this one I'm just going around it was a, a metallic purple and so I used other shades of purple light and dark and white and then for this one it was like hot pink and here I did like that comma shape and I wasn't too happy with it and I decided to just take a navy blue line and kind of smear it through and it's another different style this is another of my two favorite color combinations like a turquoise and that lime green for this one I used green and metallic copper and it's on an unpainted acorn so you have the natural color below and this one is more like an earthy neutral tone one and I find that very attractive. I really like those earthy woodsy colors. And this last one wraps up our project. I hope you enjoyed this craft. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and to be notified when I release a new video, be sure to click the little bell next to the subscribe button. I'll be back really soon with a new craft that I'm working on right now. So see you next time.